Hey guys, and welcome back. In today's video, I'll take you through the process of creating an online e-commerce store step by step. Why build an online store? Well, e-commerce tips reports that 2.4 billion people shop online globally in 2023. So getting into it can be really profitable. So I wanna make this process as simple as possible for you. And if at any point you decide to check out Shopify, which I'll be talking about, check out the link in the description below to get a discount of a dollar per month for the first three months in addition to a free three-day trial. By the way, you won't find this deal by going directly to their website. So take advantage of it while it lasts. So let's begin with the first Step, which is to identify your niche, target audience, and business model. This means you find a gap in the market and source products to serve that niche. This also gives you an idea of who you're selling to, that is your target market. Once you have all this figured out, it's time to decide on a business model. Are you a retailer, a manufacturer, a complete marketplace, or maybe you're offering a subscription-based service? Whichever you choose to do, the next step is the same, scoping out your competition. Analyzing your competition can help you in multiple ways, but the most important information it gives you is about customer expectations. As you fit into a niche, you'll need a store aesthetic to establish you within the industry, but still remain distinguishable from your competition. Research helps show you what the customer expects to see while also giving you creative insights into what vibe your stores should embody. The other information you get from this analysis is an idea of how to optimize your website for the search engine, that is search engine optimization or SEO. Keep this word in the back of your mind because we're gonna come back to it soon. Okay, so you've got your foundation and we can now move on to step two, choosing an e-commerce platform. Of course, you may decide to get a web developer and that's fine as long as you're sure your web developer really knows what they're doing. They should be familiar with every e-commerce platform out there and also be willing to give you backend access to the content management system. This way you can edit and update the website yourself and don't need to rely on an external person long-term. The other route would be building your website yourself. Either way, you'll need an e-commerce platform for your online store. Now, if you have a retail-based business model, you may need a store that showcases products first. So you might be looking around for something more functional like Shopify. With their 8,000 plus app integrations, you can customize endlessly for how you want your store to look and function through Shopify's store builder. On the other hand, you may decide to go down the other route with something like Squarespace or Wix. This would suit you more if you're selling a lifestyle brand and courses rather than physical products. In this case, you might have a store page, but the store wouldn't be the main focus of your website. This is also why analyzing your competition is really important, so you know what your website's layout will be and how your online store should look. This step also gives you an idea of how much backup space you need from the platform. If you're taking a full supermarket online, you'll need a lot more space than if you only offer a few hundred products. Whether you choose Shopify, Squarespace, Wix, or any other e-commerce platform, they all have easy to use and intuitive drag and drop store and website templates. Some, like Shopify, even automatically optimize these templates for smartphones, meaning that you don't need a separate mobile website. With e-commerce tips reporting that about 71% of e-commerce traffic comes through mobile devices, I don't need to explain why having a dynamic store that responds to mobile devices is really essential for online businesses' success. Of course, a Apart from this, the aesthetics of your store also matter. The colors and fonts you use need to complement your products, but not be so striking that it takes attention away from what you're selling. Finding that balance is really crucial. And luckily, today's e-commerce platforms offer a range of templates to choose from depending on what industry you're in, and you can always customize the specifics later on. And speaking of specifics, we now come to step three, choosing a domain name and logo. Your domain name will later become your custom URL, so if you wanna change it later, make sure you choose a platform that does let you do so. When it comes to your logo, some platforms like Shopify and Wix have logo makers that suggest various designs depending on your needs. Simply answer a questionnaire about your business and you'll get the logo that best suits your brand's identity. And if you don't go with that, there's always the option to use a digital design tool like Canva to create your own logo. And if you need any help along the way, most e-commerce platforms also offer 24-7 support. You may find such support especially useful in step four, creating 
product listings. Whether you have an online store or a website with an integrated store, you need a list of what to sell, right? So that means using catchy titles and informative descriptions, but more importantly, it means optimized metadata. Let me explain. Every time a new page appears on the internet, the search engine scans it and indexes it, but it doesn't actually scan the web page. It scans the metadata. So metadata is information not visible to your website's visitors, but the search engine can see it. It contains keywords that give the search engine an idea of what the web page is all about. So when someone searches for those keywords, the search engine can pull it up right away. And this entire process is dependent on search engine optimization or SEO. SEO is the strategy used to make sure your store appears in the organic search engine results. It depends on keyword research and constantly updating your content so you stay on top of recent trends and keep your content and products relevant. You can do this easily with an SEO app integration like Yoast SEO, which will let you know how to improve your strategy to maximize traffic. Yoast remains one of the industry leaders as an SEO plugin, but it's only available with Shopify and WordPress right now. However, other platforms have their own SEO plug tie-ins that you can explore at your leisure. Once you have your optimized product list and keywords with metadata, you're ready for the last step, which is setting up your payment gateway. Of course, there are many options today, and most e-commerce platforms cater well to this industry. They also usually have their own payment options such as Shopify or Wix payments. If you use these solutions, you usually don't have to pay any transaction fees, but if you use a third-party payment gateway like PayPal, you may need to pay a certain percentage of your earnings as transaction fees. The rate varies across platforms and plans, so make sure to check it out. You should also evaluate how seamless the checkout is. Can your customers check out in their own currency? Do they need to create an account? Does their platform send abandoned cart reminders? Is your checkout page consistent with your website's theme? These are all questions that you have to ask yourself when setting up payments. Another thing to ask is if you can offer a physical point of sale or POS system. While an online store means a digital POS is possible, you may also have to have a physical POS so your customers can pick up their goods in person, for example. You may wonder why this is necessary, but to convert leads, it's important to give your customers as many options as possible. This will help you counter e-commerce tips, 71.9% cart abandonment rate, and establish you as a force to be reckoned with among your competition. Once you're done with this, congratulations, your online store will be ready to launch. Now guys, I'm not sponsored by any e-commerce platform, but I do want to say that Shopify offers all the features that I mentioned. Additionally, you get fraud analysis and automatic tax calculation with every plan. If you choose the Shopify advanced plan at $2.99 a month with the annual payment, you also get advanced sales reports up to 15 staff accounts and carrier calculated shipping rates. This means you can give your customers real-time delivery updates. And as someone who's built several online stores, I've used Shopify every time due to their incredible, incredible features. Of course, if you have a smaller business, you may not need such robust features, and you may also not be able to afford those fees. Instead, you can get all the base features at the $29 per month basic plan. And if you want to scale your business to the top, you can go for the plus plan for 2000 bucks a month. Plus, as I said earlier, you can always use the link in my description to try out any of Shopify's plans for the first three days free and then a buck a month for the first three months after that to see how well it works for you. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Like and subscribe if this video helps you start building your online store and presence. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below, guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.